you know, whatever businesses are going through right now, this is short term when we look at the bigger picture. Hi, I'm Terrell Turner, the host of the Business Talk Library, and today I have another great guest on. Now, if you've been on LinkedIn, you've probably seen Jacqueline's videos, and the reason why it stood out to me so well, one is because the videos always look great, um, always well polished, but I think the topic that she hits on, and she says it in a lot of her videos, this is for women leaders that are in a male-dominated industry. So. Welcome to the show, Jacqueline. Thank you, Terrell, for having me. I'm very excited to talk to you, and I appreciate the feedback on those videos. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm always a, a fan of, like I said, of learning from others that are putting out great content and, and also just promoting and telling other people, hey, go check out her material. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Jacqueline, tell us a little bit about, you know, your background, your professional background before you started your business? So before I started Zero Gap, I was working as a federal contractor at the Center for Disease Control. And more specifically, I was in a program operations role working in disease eradication and elimination globally. So it was that full-time work mixed with my volunteer work, which was all around professional development for young professionals and for women that was a catalyst to me starting Zero Gap. Okay, so how was that switch for you? Or was it, did it feel like much of a switch to go from you know, working in disease control to Zero Gap? It wasn't that hard of a transition because I've always been involved in professional development all of my life. So it was really like this was something that was in the back of my skill set and I wasn't utilizing it full time. One of the things that helped me realize that this was my purpose in life was I was running a chapter as a volunteer leader in Atlanta for women and it was all about professional development, networking, things like that. They asked you as a volunteer to do one event a month and I consistently hosted four to five events a month for 13 consecutive months. And that was a full-time job, and I, I spent a lot of my own money. I didn't get paid because it was volunteering. That's how I knew that this is what I wanted. So the transition wasn't hard at all. Awesome. I mean, that is a lot, I mean, to do it for 13 months. And, I mean, just to be consistent with that. I mean, it definitely probably showed you a lot about, hey, where your heart was and what you really had a passion for. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about what it's been like in developing, you know, the business of Zero Gap, kind of how is it, how was that experience of developing, hey, what's my message going to be and who's my target audience? Such an, another really good question. I knew early on that I wanted to support young professionals, which is where I was at that phase of my life. When I wrote my first book, Navigating the Career Jungle, that book became a bestseller, but I had people of all ages reaching out to me and saying, this book is relevant. So that made me really pause and say, okay, because of my age, I wanted to limit myself to an audience of just young people. But as I began to continuously pray and grow spiritually, I wanted to really hone in on what is my purpose? What am I here for? And that's what ultimately led me to focus on serving women leaders because my life's mission is to eliminate the gender wage gap and the way that i saw that i can make a dent in that was in two areas one teaching women how to negotiate and two helping women to advance in leadership because earnings are related to two of those areas now it's a complex issue and there's a lot of other factors but that's where i saw that i could make a big impact and that's what i focus on with zero gap and that's something that I, I like, even as on the show, as we talk to, you know, hundreds of entrepreneurs, one of the things that I, I find to be very admirable is when you can find a entrepreneur 
that is brave enough to say, hey, I know who my target market is. And I'm not afraid to say, hey, because I'm just focused on this group, that I'm afraid that I'm not going to, you know, get enough business or I'm not going to, you know, have enough, you know, clientele. So how did you overcome that concern of, hey, am I too niche focused or, hey, no, I am focused on the right thing? It was never a concern because when I didn't dream of being an entrepreneur, although I've had entrepreneurial tendencies all of my life. I used to sell potato chips in my mom's hair salon back in the day. <laughs> so um, when I really started to learn about entrepreneurship in a true sense, I heard over and over again this cliche phrase that the riches are in the niches. And I didn't understand that. But as I continued to explore it, people kept saying, you've got to niche down until it hurts. Specialize in something. And when I really went back, back to my mission this is what i believe my life's calling is it wasn't hard for me to alienate other people because it's much larger than myself and it's not about excluding people it's about being targeted and focused and serving people who really need these services of negotiation and advancing in leadership so i saw it more as this is a better support role for me and then i had all of this knowledge in the back of my head that said you've got to be specific Awesome. So speaking of that specific audience and that target market, what are some of the resources that you provide for that audience? You mentioned earlier that on LinkedIn, I post videos. So for the last two years, I put out videos very consistently on LinkedIn to women. That's one way for me to provide a free resource to the audience. And as we're recording this video today, I'm celebrating 200 episodes of my podcast. So I have found ways to really give them resources that are very cost effective. So for people who are just entering, they can go through those programs. And then on a broader perspective, when women leaders want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, Zero Gap has a resilient leaders program, which is a four-week virtual program where they get group coaching to advance in their leadership. We have corporate programs as well, and we also offer executive coaching. So we have a full suite of products that assist women in addition to the books that I've written. Awesome. Now, can you tell us the, the name of the, some of those books you've written? Yes. So the first book is Navigating the Career Jungle, A Guide for Young Professionals. And that book has recently picked up in sales because the first chapter talks about savvy networking. And I love to network online. So everybody is looking for best practices to network online. It's been really exciting. The book is over five years old to see it resurge. The other books are negotiation books. So don't leave money on the table, negotiation strategies. And there's a companion workbook to that, the Don't Leave Money on the Table negotiation workbook. Now, where can people find you online, on social media, to get their hands on those resources and to also, you know, take advantage of some of the products and services you offer? So I'm online everywhere at Jacqueline Swilly, but connect with me on LinkedIn because that is my favorite place to hang out online. And from there, you'll get linked to all of the other resources that we offer. Awesome. Now, was there anything that, that really drew you to making LinkedIn kind of your favorite place to hang out versus other platforms? So I am active on all platforms. Twitter used to be my jam back in the day. But what LinkedIn has really allowed me to do is to connect with those professional women that I know that I serve. And so, yeah, they're on Instagram and I hang out on Instagram and they're on Facebook. But for me, I really enjoy the type of dialogue that LinkedIn fosters. You get to go beyond the surface, you get to show your personality, but also have those thought provoking conversations. Awesome. Awesome. Now, but right before we started the interview, we were talking kind of about, you know, what pivoting your business in light of what's going on with COVID-19, like what have been some of the changes to your approach that you've taken in light of the pandemic and, and still being able to add value to your clientele? 
Yeah, so just like everyone else, this hit our business really hard. I shared with you earlier, in less than 24 hours, two and a half months worth of business was canceled. It was like every few hours there was a cancellation. So I made a decision at that point that myself and Zero Gap will come out of this pandemic stronger than we went in it. And so that meant pulling out my dry erase marker and going to the whiteboard and sketching out, like really going back to our business plan is looking at what's relevant, what's no longer relevant. And that's where we started. It started with that plan that we already had in place and started making adjustments from there. So um, that was our most pivotal tool was going back to that plan. And right now we are really focused on our virtual trainings. So we have online courses that are available through Zero Gap. And those have been extremely um, well received in terms of the conversations we're having with organizations and individuals to help them really sharpen their skills. Because one thing we know is that this isn't going to last forever. You know, whatever businesses are going through right now, this is short term when we look at the bigger picture. So it's important for especially women to keep their skills sharp. So if they find themselves being reduced or downsized out of a company, that they can use those skills to leverage for another opportunity. And similarly for customers who are corporate clients who are downsizing, they need their employees to enhance their skills because they're gonna be juggling multiple balls. So those are some of the conversations we're having right now. Awesome, awesome. Now, before we wrap up the interview, um, you know, question that I like to ask every guest that we come on, because what I find is that every guest we have on is filled with a wealth of knowledge and from what I've seen of, you know, your videos and your content that you've shared, definitely a wealth of knowledge. So I always ask, you know, what are at least two tips that you've learned kind of in your journey? And I want to say, you know, one tip you would give to women that are trying to navigate, you know, leadership in a, a male dominated industry, like what's one tip you would give them for that? And then the other question is, what's one tip that you would give an entrepreneur and say, hey, this is a lesson you need to grasp if you're going to be successful? Such good questions. So the first question, what would I tell women in male dominated industries? is to own your power. We have this catchphrase at Zero Gap that says, nah, I know my value. And nah, I know my value isn't a, a clapback phrase. It is really the fullest expression of your self-confidence and your self-worth, knowing what you bring to the table and standing firmly in that success. So that's what I would say is that confidence is key. And for women entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs in general, really, the lesson that I learned, and I took this from my mom, who's been in business for over 25 years. When I first started Zero Gap, I asked her, you know, what is one piece of advice you would give me? And she said, consistency is key. And so even as your pivot pivots and it changes, you still got to show up. You still got to show up for your clients, no matter what's going on in the world or in your life. And that consistency has been such a great reward for me, whether I am in a season where things are great or I'm in a season where things are really tight and I'm trying to figure it out, it's consistency is the, the key. Awesome. Well, Jacqueline, thank you so much for coming on the show, for telling us about your business, Zero Gap, and then sharing the insight and the wisdom. And, and I definitely advise everyone that's listening and watching is definitely check out her content on LinkedIn. There's a wealth of knowledge out there and, and tell other people to check it out because I think there's a wealth of knowledge that Jacqueline provides. So thank you, Jacqueline, for being on. Terrell, thank you so much. And thank you for what you do for entrepreneurs with your show. These episodes, they get right to the point. I love your interview style. So keep going. This is awesome. Thanks for tuning in to the Business Talk Library. If you like what you heard and you want to hear more, be sure to click the subscribe button and follow us on all social media platforms as the Business Talk Library.